You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nery here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's something me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Home Somewhere Else. So yeah, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm chain, you were up, and let's go. All right. Should uh, we just leave those there? Fred motions to the still burning fireplace, the wood beginning to die down ever so slightly. I guess. I think I'll put it out by. My, I think I'll put it out by itself. Oh. I think it'll put it. Uh, I think it'll put out by itself. I hope you're right. Okay, this way. The two of you remove your birthday hats and leave it on the small table next to the couch as you start making your way down to the corridor, making sure to be as silent as possible. Fred follows behind you, matching matching your every step. You both reach the end of the hallway. You twist the doorknob and usher Fred inside. You enter into the room and flick the light switch, closing the door behind you. So, uh, welcome to the guest room. There's the bathroom. It's very nice. If you need to use it, please do so. Oh, nice. I've been holding it all day. And this is my bed. It's pretty soft. I guess we're sleeping together. Fred raises an eyebrow and smirks. Not like that. Not like that, you melon. I know. Do you mind sleeping in the same bed? If you stay on your side of the bed, I'll do the same. Deal. You'll excuse me. The tall man walks toward the open bathroom and closes the door behind him. You patiently sit on the bed, hoping Fred won't be too long. Saving it, f saving it for this long has got, the, has got to be unhealthy. You take your phone out of your pocket, turn it on, flicking the screen up to your thumb with your thumb. Whoa, I've got a few notifications. Did he message me? You open up the text messaging app and scroll through her messages. They're only an hour old. Yo, Chad, gonna be late tomorrow so you don't have to be early. Stay put for now. I'll text you more info later. Hey, come two hours later than you normally would. I'm gonna do the same, Momo. You pull up the keyboard function and start typing. Cool with me. I'm gonna go grab stuff anyways. Before you can turn off your phone, you see a green circle appear next to Jenny's face. Is Jenny online? Yo, Chad, you wake this late? Is everything good? going good? Did you? Did my boys have a good time? Yeah, it was okay. I was waiting for Fred to get out of the bathroom. Wait, what? Fred's still there, with the, still there this late? Yeah, he's in my bedroom. <laughs> Jenny sends a flood of eggplant emojis. Why are you sending me vegetables? <laughs> what does that mean? It's a keyboard smash. Are you new to texting? Yes. How do, how do I do that? Just press any button. One. H. It's not working. Oh my god. We need to have a talk. Aren't we talking now? Anyhow, why is he in your bedroom? Uh, Kathy and Fred were supposed to do some gardening business, but we came home late, so she let him stay the night instead of walking home in the dark. A sleepover? Uh, not really. Are you guys going to wear some matching PJs and tell ghost stories? How about doing each other's nails? Can I come over, please? Every sleepover needs booze. What are you talking about? Also, I can't make that decision. This is Kathy's house, after all. Boo! I know. I know. I'm going to make my, make my own sleepover with a poker and strippers. And everyone's invited. And by everyone, I mean just you and Fred. Sure. Sounds fun. I've never seen a stripper before. You're too sexy to need a stripper. You should be a stripper. But that'll be in the future. I wonder what that could possibly mean. Before you can text her back, you hear the doorknob for the bathroom turn. All right, Jenny, time for bed. See you tomorrow. Nighty night, Chad. Please let the Fred bug, Fred bug bite. She sends you a peach emoji. This one doesn't need any explanation. Jenny, no. Sorry, not before marriage. Good night. No. You laugh as you turn off your phone and place it onto the nightstand. You turn to face Fred. <laughs> Uh, all right, it's bedtime. You're stunned to find Fred shirtless. Where should I put these? Um, damn, he's got nipples that can cut glass. Jesus. You can't find the words to respond for a few seconds. You can't help but ogle at his toned physique and his juicy pecs. You bask in his masculine glow, looking up from his massive pecs down to his toned abdomen. You catch yourself arriving at the end of his V-shaped pelvis. You look away in embarrassment. It's obvious that Fred has no qualms about you feasting your eyes on his body, considering he's been smirking directly at you the entire time. When did you get those? Get what? My mommy milkers? My honker donker doinky boinkies? My washboard abs? Or my massive... <laughs> yes, those. Shut up! Ah, you like them? Fred flexes his muscular arms and tightens his chest, shoulders swelling and his abdomen is on full display. You look away from Fred, embarrassed, feeling blood rush to your head. Both of them. Don't get cocky with me. Ah, oh, come on, you used to play with my pecs all day. Go to sleep. 
He walked past Fred towards the bathroom. He's flying high with a joyful smile. You enter the bathroom and look at yourself in the mirror. You're as red as Apple, but that's not to mention what's going on downstairs. Damn it, I really can't be feeling like this about him. After all these years, how does he still know how to push my buttons? You unzip your fly and do your thing. Your battle buddy, your battle buddy having calmed down considerably. Battle buddy. You walk to the water faucet and open it. Scrub your hands in the sink and wash your face. Then you turn off the bathroom light and exit the bathroom with a tired yawn. You close the bathroom door behind you and find Fred putting his clothing on top of a shelf. Without hesitation, the man removes his pants and folds them up. You can't help but look at his thighs. How many times are we are you going to I are we going to I fuck this poor man, Chad? Is this going to be a trend? This feels wrong. Uh, Fred, what the shit? What? You can't expect me to sleep in my jeans like some psychopath, right? Yeah, well, maybe sleeping in jeans is sleeping in jeans is pretty gross. And besides, I'm doing you a solid, huh? Oh, shut up. You expectedly look away in embarrassment. Fred chuckles as he moseys on over to his side of the bed. He covers himself with the sheets and grabs his phone from the nightstand. He locks in and starts clacking away, more, like, more than likely replying to some messages. You sit on the bed and let out a deep breath, the bed almost seducing you to just lay back and pass out. With your back turned to Fred, you nervously start undressing despite Fred's presence. You unzip your pants and slip them off, hoping Fred doesn't catch a look. Fred quietly giggles. You turn to see he's still typing away while looking at his phone. You throw your shirt off and throw yourself under the sheets without a second's hesitation. Whoa, when did you get so bulky? I, um, I really don't know. Alrighty. Well, you look pretty great. I like the new you. Thanks, I guess. You kind of just shrug, not sure how to take the compliment. Do I really look that different? I'm surprised you didn't notice my tattoos. I mean it, by the way. You look really manly and handsome. You feel a bit... I feel a bit of red return to your cheeks. I bet you get a lot of people hitting on you. Now I see why Jenny calls you Muscle Dobby Boy. That's Muscle Dobby Boy XXL to you. Not really. If anything, I think there's less people interested in me than, than when I was younger. There's this one coworker that's been on me like white, like white on rice. He's never stopped flirting with me, and honestly, it was very uncomfortable. I'm sorry to hear that. How did you find out you're gay? Gay? What makes you think I'm gay? I could be into girls now, for all you know. Fred faces you, a raised eyebrow, and coy smirk tells it all. Uh-huh. You. Into girls. Let's be real, Chad. Real about what? You know what? It's too late for this conversation. Buenas noches, bitch. You reach over and pull on the lamp's rope, turning it off and throwing the room into darkness. A few seconds of silence are broken by Fred giggling once more. He can silence his phone. <laughs> click, clack, click, clack, click, clack, clickety clack. Fred, why? Fred's texting continues on for a few more minutes, the dim light from his phone lighting up your face. He even laughs here and there. Fred, please, let's just go to sleep. I'm a little bit, I'm a, in a little bit, buddy. I'm almost done texting Jenny. She's telling me about her sleepover featuring hookers and blackjack. Oh my god, Jenny. Also, how do you guys know each other? Huh? We told you earlier. You did? Yeah, well, we've known each other for nine years now. A year after you disappeared, she moved back into town and we started hanging out. She's been pretty supportive to me. Honestly, those were dark times for me. Without her, I don't know where I'd be. Oh, I'm glad she's been there for you. And Jenny seems like a great friend. She's honestly the best. She's pretty weird at first, but when you get to know her better, she's the greatest friend you can ask for. I can certainly see that. See what? Her being a great friend and all. Yeah, I'm sure you two will be great friends too. Yeah, that'd be cool. The one tip I can give is no formalities. She can take almost anything people anything except people being serious with her. Yeah, I almost called her boss and I thought she was gonna skin I almost called her boss and I thought she was gonna skin me. Yeah, you gotta be careful there, buddy. That being said, when I'm around, I tend to be the butt of her jokes. You're literally the butt of her jokes, considering that massive slap you gave her. She gave you earlier. I heard it echo, you know. Yeah, yeah. Stay out of sight from her jokes, and it'll be your ass next. I'll do my best. Thanks for the advice, by the way. You're very welcome, Muscle Dobby boy. Fred pats your shoulder. XXL. Why does everyone forget the XXL? Fred lets out a giggle. Also, try not to be late, okay? She tends to get worried pretty quickly. Oh, don't worry. I don't want to screw this up. And speaking of worrying people, how did your mom handle my disappearance? What did she think happened to me? Excuse me. Uh, what did you, what did you end up telling her? 
Well, she knows the same as me, and that is... <clears throat> well, she knows you disappeared and that it was my fault. She also knows that despite what happened, I've been looking for you all these years. She's been helping me, too. We still went on hikes to the mountains, searched the shoreline, and put up posters. Chad, for Chad, for her sake, please go see her soon. I will. Don't worry. I really want to see her again. Can't wait for her to see you again. I hope I can be there. Mm. Second, you know. Mm. Mm. There we go. Maybe. Oh. Same thing? Okay. Thank you so much, Chad. You're welcome. Would you want to meet together? Yes, please. Just the thought of seeing her happy makes you smile. The feeling of Fred's tail hitting your leg tells you he's feeling the same. I remember how much she would smile when Fred and I would walk through her door after class. She was always so loving and welcoming. The more you think of the old days, the more your, heart's be your heart begins to ache. You feel a small tear begin to form in the corner of your eye. It's time to sleep. Agreed. Ugh. Oh, I'll stop pestering you. Good night, Chad. Good night, Fred. Hey. Hmm? Thank you for giving me a second chance. I won't let you down again. We'll see, okay? Alright. Night night, buddy. Sleep well. Fred turns to face the ceiling and puts his hands behind his head. You roll over to face the wall away from Fred. The warmth of the bed and the German Shepherd against your back makes you feel sleepier and sleepier. It feels so worn out and torn up. It feels like the longest day of your life. Thankfully, your pain is something the bed can easily relieve. Oh, uh, You feel a warm light shine on your face. It almost feels like the sun is kissing you while you lay down sloppily in bed. You nestle yourself deeper into a comfortable position, a pleasant scent filling your nose as you press your face deeper into your fuzzy pillow. You move your leg a bit and it feels like it's tangled in a thick sheet. You move your arm a little to get more comfortable. It feels like you're laying on top of something that's pretty squishy. Wait a minute, your pillow isn't fuzzy and whatever your leg is tangled with is also pretty warm and... <laughs> Oh, I see it now. Oh, boy. Well, well, well. You hesitantly open your crusty eyes, feeling around to find... Your head is firmly placed into the German Shepherd's pecs. The more you wake up, the more you realize your predicament. The right side of your body is draped over Fred like you're a pair, like you're a pair of lovers. Well, oh, so much for me staying on my side of the bed. You look at the German Shepherd's face. He's peacefully asleep. His breathing is quiet and calming. It's kind of cute. God, good, he's still asleep. How do I get off of him without him noticing? You try and think of different plans of attack. It seems possible as long as you play it safe. You better be quick before. You hear a small gasp from Fred. You look up to see him opening his mouth like he's going to sneeze. Without hesitation, Fred lifts up his arm and plugs his nose with the back of his hand. You continue looking at the man, but it seems like he's still very much asleep. Sneeze avoided. Phew! You carefully peel your arm off, peel your arm off Fred's, uh, Fred's thick pecs and slide it back to your side. Now it's time for your leg. You poke your head up and see that your leg is across the entire bed, laying on top of Fred's stomach. You lightly lift your leg off of Fred and move it, and slowly move it back to your side of the bed. Your leg is hovering a few inches away from Fred, doing your best not to touch him. But suddenly you feel something firm stop your leg from moving. It feels like there's a stick touching the back of your knee where your Fred's crotch would be. It's really warm for some reason. You feel your face become filled with blood. Your cheeks turn bright red as you realize what your leg is touching. All right, y'all, I'm going to pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Before I go, I'm going to give a quick shout-out to our lovely bronze-tier patrons. Thank you all for all I do for the channel. We greatly appreciate your support. Thank you for our silver-tier patron, Cade Submarine. Thank you for going but above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you for our gold-tier patron, Tresum Guy. You're awesome. We love you. Thank you for subbing to Ultimate Tier. Anyway, if you, yeah, anyway, if you all want to get your names in the credits, get access to all of our not safe for work contents as little as $5. Alrighty, I love you all. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.